with Nelson Mandela's coffin. Vice Admiral of the Navy and Major Generals from the Army, from the Air Force. It's called the coffin. It was a moment of great pride for Nelson Mandela when the armed forces at his inauguration saluted him and took, as watched him take the oath and as he wrote about it at the time, it was so extraordinary. These were the people who in other circumstances would have been arresting him and here they were saluting him and he said the same of the fly past at Pretoria and there's going to be a fly past here later on after the burial, commander-in-chief there of the defense force and there's going to be a fly past here What he actually said was that just after he'd been uh, once after, just after he'd sworn the oath. So we all lifted our eyes in awe as a spectacular army of South African jets, helicopters and troop carriers roared in perfect formation over us and a sign of the military's loyalty to democracy. Only moments before, the highest generals of the South African Defence Force and the police, their chests bedecked with ribbons and medals from days gone by, saluted me and pledged their loyalty. I wasn't unmindful of the fact that not so many years before they wouldn't have saluted but arrested me. And now these same officers, many of them now, officers who joined and risen through the ranks, who were members of Mkonte Wisizwe, the military wing of the ANC, many black officers here, are supervising this movement of the coffin into the area where the grave site is for the second part of the service when the president and family are all seated there and this rather delicate operation of sliding the coffin from the gun carriage is successfully carried out and the bearers take it through into the grave site itself I should just say, if you're watching on BBC One and expecting another program to start now, we are staying with these pictures from Kunu in the trans sky, the pictures of the final stages of the funeral of President Nelson Mandela. His coffin being borne down the hill, or down the slope, I should say, to where the gravesite is, where members of his family, senior members of the government, Distinguished foreign visitors at all have all gathered for this part of the funeral and his actual burial in the ground that he wanted to be buried in, here on his own land in Kunu. What is the importance of territory in this uh, funeral, Professor? I mean, he was very adamant he had to be buried in Kunu, nowhere else. Not in his actual birthplace, but here. And as we know, there was a huge dispute within the family about whether it would be here in Kunu or at his, at his birthplace where he was uh, only for a year or so, a few miles up the road. Yeah, Kunu actually is the home of Mandela. It has been a home for many years now. Even though he was born in Mvezo, but most of his life was spent at Kuno, 
and what he knows is Kono as the home. I thought the body had to be buried near the place where the umbilical cord of the newborn child No, no, was, no, no, was, no, no was, not was, necessarily. Ah. Remember, all already where he is being buried now, many of the family members have been buried there. Why was there this great dispute about the bodies being taken away from here to Mvezo and then brought back from Mvezo here? What was that all about? I suspect people wanted to use the, 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 what you are mentioning now, that he was born there. But I also suspect there must have been an agenda, a political agenda, that the people in Mvezo, and especially Manda perhaps, wanted Mvezo as where he is the chief. Well, that is, of course, now behind us. Uh, this is the agreed place for burial, and let's yes. just now watch the ceremonial here in Kunu. They took a miniature flag from the top of the coffin, handed over to the chief of staff, who's going to hand it to the president for presentation to the next of kin. Orders, decorations, and medals are meant to be included there. In the background, I think that is the president just getting up and in the little marquee that's been set up there receiving those. Rasa Machel receiving the miniature flag then and President Zuma resumes his seat. On the right hand seat there in the marquee with the hat the headband, Mandela Mandela the senior member of the family now, grandson of Nelson Mandela. The undraped coffin is now standing on that small catafalque, ready for the final ceremonies of the funeral to begin. Let 
us pray. The Lord will find the kind of man he wants and make him ruler of his people. living and loving savior and comforter we worship you as the light of the world in our grief we cling to the steadfast truth that you love us with an undying love now that was a man after god's own heart we know that the grim reaper death does not speak the last word god speaks the last word and his word is always a good word this morning we are compelled to give god honor and to thank him for the life of madiba we believe that beyond the absence there is presence beyond the pain there is healing beyond the brokenness there is wholeness beyond the turmoil there is peace beyond the hurting there is heaven beyond the fighting there is peace and beyond the silence god speaks we will remember nelson holishasha Mandel to the family and friends of our late commander-in-chief may god soothe your grief may god sanctify your memories May the grace of the Lord be sufficient now and whenever the longing for Tata becomes unbearable. Rest in peace. Yours was truly a long walk to freedom. And now you have achieved the ultimate freedom in the bosom of your maker, God Almighty. Amen. The military officers, senior officers, pallbearers, replacing their caps. The pallbearers who actually carry the coffin, having retired earlier, and these senior officers having taken their place, and now helicopters with the South African flag for the fly, fly blast over the grave site. Much as he would have had at the time of his inauguration. Jets of South African Airway coming in, Jack Southern Air Force coming in from Pretoria here, flown in across. We saw them here an hour ago. streaming smoke as they come across Kunu. A final salute to the Commander-in-Chief and former President of South Africa. sound of a 21 round salute at the same time as the fly past. A mixture of planes here, training aircraft and fighter planes and helicopters.
and this is the place, the place that they're flying over, where Nelson Mandela's body has finally been laid to rest on these hills in Kunu, just near the house that he built. smoke from the guns wafting away there on the right of the picture. sound of the last post. If you strain to hear it coming from the gravesite. Last post followed by Rivali and the military pallbearers, the senior officers, will now salute and withdraw and this has become a very private moment and I think the cameras of the South African Broadcasting Corporation which we've been using have themselves withdrawn from the grave site and have left this as a private moment for the family. So we come back here into the studio in Pretoria where we've all been sitting watching these events. Some final thoughts for you about the events of today. A bit overwhelming because one knew this had to come. Uh, but still one raises a lot of questions. Where to from here? I'm optimistic but I couldn't spell out why I'm optimistic. Uh, but uh, also the fact that this ceremony did take place without any hitches. Yes, people spoke longer than we expected, but still by and large it was well done. Both the Defence Force and the Mkonto vet veterans had their say. The flags were both the ANC flag, which was the Mkonto one, as well as the national flag. So it's, it was also symbolically very well managed. So I think Therefore, it's one of the reasons why one feels hopeful for the future. Is what? Is that it's still achieving a kind of inclusiveness? Yes, and that it was thought necessary, it was done, and there were no problems about the inclusiveness. Ali Baka, what about you? Uh, for me, I think there are two factors. The one is that in 1995, when we won the Rugby World Cup, the togetherness, the unity, the camaraderie the, amongst all the peoples was unbelievable, unprecedented. And you know, after that, gradually and slowly, it's moved apart. I mean, a year ago, this country was somewhat divided again. I think what's happened in the last 10 days, the unity's even been even greater than 1995. So the point one is that let's hope to God that this unity of all the different people can go forward. I think secondly, I think South Africa did Madiba so proud these past 10 days. And I think the world will acknowledge this. And I think we have another opportunity in this country because we have lost confidence with the international community. There can be no question about it. And I think there's an opportunity now for the leadership of government, of the ANC, to take cognizance of what Madiba and his fellow comrades stood for, their integrity, their values, and what they fought for, and to take it up and raise the bar 
and restore confidence in this country with the international community. There's still a, a problem, isn't there, around the ANC itself and the arguments about it. I mean, not to do with Nelson Mandela, not to do with his period as presidency, but what's happened since? But I hope they fix you know, what's happened here. There's such a clear message to South Africans of seniority. It's like a cricket team. If your captain, your leader's good, it'll permeate through, you probably have a very successful team. The country is no different. A successful country needs good governance and it's got to start at the top. Professor, what's your feeling about uh, today's events? And it seems as if the, the traditional Tembu ideas of how a funeral should be conducted have been rather pushed to one side by the grandeur and the scale of the state event. Yeah, I think there might have been negotiations between government and the chiefs to, 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 to have the funeral done this way. And also, I think after the funeral, there's going to be a need for the Tembo shifting ship to come together with the government and decide if there are mistakes that were committed, how those can be solved peacefully going forward. We saw the coffin there. We didn't see it being lowered into the ground. You've talked earlier about the way that people talk to yes. the body, talk to the spirit, I suppose. That's right. Would, that will happen. I mean, our cameras won't be there, but that will be happening, will it, before the, before the mortal remains are, are buried? It might happen as the coffin is going down, or it might also be that that opportunity was given already last night. So that, 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 that's, that's a possibility. Good. All right. But well, let's what, keep... Okay. I've got, no, go on. Sorry. I'm going to stop you. Uh, I was going to something else now. Okay, go to it. Quickly. Yes. Uh, I was going to say what the South Africans remain with now is a challenge to decide whether to uphold Nelson Mandela's values. When he was still alive, maybe it was easy to say we want to be like Mandela. And now he is no more. We remain behind. We need to decide whether we want to uphold those values or we, we, we just want to be reckless about our, lives in, our life in South Africa. So that, that, that is a, a big challenge that the South Africans remain with now at all levels, at all levels, right from the government up to the, the lowest level in the country. And this will emerge over a year or two. I mean, there are elections here in a few months' time, aren't there? And maybe something will emerge from that. Yes, something might emerge from that. Something, especially if the leadership in the government do not become serious about the values of the ruling party, I mean the original values now, that people like Mandela stood for. So you think the, da the danger is, do you agree with this, that there's a, a, a real threat to the, that the values of the ANC are no longer coming through and need to be restated? They need to be restated, but they are coming through at Mangaung. Yes. The res conference resolution was to set up an integra in integrity commission, yes. which is tasked with this idea of ensuring the values also to... But does an integrity commission get rid of corruption at local level, families being no, supported it's, it's by ANC members, no. mayors of cities giving... The point is, this is limited. It's not everything we want. But it is looking now at people who have uh, put the... disgrace the values of the ANC. People who have uh, gone contrary to the values. So the Commission does look at those cases. Some of them will be public quite soon or All right. near future, well, but it is existing. So at least that marks a step of recognition by the leadership that that's the way we need to go. Dr. Jimala, thanks. Extraordinary events at 6.40 tonight, 20 to 7 on BBC Two. Um, but otherwise, from here in Pretoria, an extraordinary 
send-off, a powerful send-off for a great man ends, not just here today in Kunu, before that in Pretoria with the ANC rally, the lying in state, the memorial event in the Soweto football stadium. Everyone from statesmen to people watching in the crowd have tried to find the words to describe their feelings about Nelson Mandela, their affection for his warmth and sparkle, their admiration for his stoicism, pride in the courage and steadfastness that he's shown, and their determination not to let his vision die. This is a story that's going to take its place among the great legends of our time, a story so extraordinary that in a hundred years and a hundred years more, people will still say, what a man. From Pretoria, goodbye. Asim, oh, nanda. Asim.